Hi once again, Smurf, back after a two month break. Uh, apologies for that, there's been a good reason for it. I've been very busy with my real job for most of December, so um, I picked it up again in January. And as you can see from the player, there's a couple of tracks on there which are kind of milestones there. Works in progress, if you'll forgive the pun. And um, the main thing that needs changing on them is the vocals. So um, things that have changed. Uh, I've moved away from the, the Boss BR600, not for any reason other than I have to give it back to its owner. Um, so I borrowed it for a couple of months, made use of it. I've got a lot of my basic tracks done on there. And now I've moved over to PC, which you may be able to see in the background. Um, that's not my PC, again, I've borrowed it. Um, and I'm running Cubase LE on there. The main thing that all this recording's brought back is actually the uh, how fragile this equipment is. Um, instruments and recording equipment. Um, I've had a few casualties along the way. There's been a couple here. We've got the uh, the lovely capo I now have to have on the Yamaha guitar. This nut has cracked and the intonation has gone on the guitar, which means that you know if I play further up the fretboard it just sounds hideously out of tune so I basically tuned down half a step I added a capo that's made a sort of zero fret but all my dots are in the wrong place now so I've got to concentrate on what I'm doing um, other things that have fallen by the wayside I've lost uh, two harmonicas of bust reeds whilst I've recorded and, um, and my lovely uh, boom arm mic stand is now held together with sellotape and this bit spins when it shouldn't you know so I'm having trouble keeping my mics um, pointing at me or at the instruments while I'm playing. A um, little acquisition I've got on here, um, back to the guitar, the Acoustic Ace, Bronze Ace, um, John Hornby Skew's nasty wooden pickup. It's, um, I mean, it's good in the sense that it was free, and the reason it was free is because it took so long to be delivered, we gave up on it, and in fact, um, we actually believed it was never going to turn up and um, the supplier gave me my money back and then and then it turned up. Um, so completely free but it's not practical for a, any kind of live sound, it's just far too noisy. does work though with amp simulators on these studio in the box systems or your know, VST plugins or whatever you like. Not too bad for that, just again terrible with an amp. For about seven quid, I bought myself one of those harmonica holder things you hang around your neck, like Bob Dylan did. Um, this is in order that I can, you know, do solo performances. Um, a couple of downsides to it: one, the angle, the way it's designed, it puts the harmonica at completely the wrong angle, and you don't get that what they call embouchure. Um, you can't get your mouth around it properly. You just, I just tended to blow over the top, so I've had to bend the actual uh, body of it, the bit that's holding the harmonica, about 30 degrees I would say, so that it's pointing more directly into my mouth and um, I can get my mouth round it and I've got some, you know, a, a kind of more of an airtight seal. Um, but I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do. There's no instructions with it and I, I've I need to check out what other people do because that, that doesn't seem right but um, there you go, it doesn't seem to be designed um, ergonomically should we say you know, for, for, in, a, in a practical kind of way the other downside to it is the um, the fact that what he's actually doing is suspending a, a harmonica full of months old dried stale spit directly under your nose that seems like a really bad design flaw um, and, and that makes me think, I look at old footage of Bob Dylan, you know, and he's got, um, he's got that harmonica holder uh, directly in front of his face. And he was quite a heavy smoker, and I think to myself, that must have stunk. Those old marine bands, you know, with all that wood and everything, soaking up all that spit, they must have smelled so bad. I thought I'd 
to share with you a Christmassy type anecdote. Um, I know Christmas is past, but Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you anyway. Um, shop centres, department store centres. Um, not a big fan of them. I've had a couple of bad experiences with Santa's little helpers. I know Santa can't be everywhere, so he needs these guys to help him, but uh, uh, they don't really do it for me. Um, I was probably only about five years old and we had a little church hall type affair, Christmas bazaar. And it was quite late in the day and I think they were all packing up and um, I got sort of coaxed into going in to see this Santa in his little dimly little grotto. And um, I think I was dumbstruck completely as he was talking to me about what did I want for Christmas had I been a good little boy and I probably said nothing in return, a quaking with fear. And so he said to me, OK, um, we'll have a Merry Christmas or say goodbye. You must have to go out through this special, Santa's special little exit. You have to go through this tunnel into my magical world. And I never did find out what was on the other end. Um, when they were packing up, I think they turned the lights off in the little room that it led to. So I was basically leaving somewhere I was frightened of and going into this completely pitch black room. Uh, and I screamed my head off. And the other experience was probably I was when I was a bit more cynical, you know, when you get to nine or ten and you start to think this is all a bit of a, you know, I'll say no more. But uh, we queued up in a Debenham store to see a Father Christmas and um, it was a long queue and it takes us a long time to get round to see him. And we were about maybe two or three kids from seeing him when he um, jumped up from his seat and said, right, I'm on my lunch now. Uh, Everyone can take one toy each, but don't nick nothing.